Now we come to the data deluge, which I will give lots of examples of this, taking most of these from resources which are available as attached to this, uh, this talk, which uh, tell you where you can find the original source of this data. Uh, we've taken quite a bit from a talk by Mikram Wu on Internet Trends, uh, just recently, May of 2013. And it just points out the total amount of um, global information or global data. We will discuss a little bit later on that um, data, information, and knowledge are all sort of recorded as bits and bytes. They're part of a pipeline. And uh, it's rather difficult, in fact, to tell. But when, what is it, when data turns into information, typically information is cleaned up data, and knowledge is insight gathered from information. So we have here a zettabyte, and we're up to here by in 2015, we estimate we'll be at eight uh, zettabytes. 2013, the estimate is um, a little less than four zettabytes. Notice a zettabyte is um, given here in terms of its size. It's pretty huge. If you take a typical local storage on a pretty solid sized client, that's 100 gigabytes. A zettabyte is 10 to the 10th as big as a typical local storage. So that's a lot of data. Here's one driver, and then we have some examples of driver. Um, Things driving this, it, um, <clears throat> currently we have about 100 hours of video uploaded every minute. So you're not gonna be able to watch all the video uploaded to YouTube. And one of the videos being uploaded to, to, to YouTube will be the 90 minutes or so of this particular presentation. So that just says that what I'm doing here is a pathetic, um, 70 times as much data as this uh, as is in this talk every minute. So that's uh, reasonably humbling. Anyway, we can see a strong increase here. It's uh, doubled in a couple of years here. Photos are even uh, possibly even more striking. Um, it's also interesting how photos are driven. They're not driven by a sort of photo site, Flickr, which is a tiny, tiny blip here. Rather, it's driven by Facebook and associated similar types of social networking um, sites. Instagram is in fact purchased by Facebook. And it's um, social networking is driving this dramatic increase in the number of photos available on the internet. That, in fact, is having some impact on the fields of computer vision and, and um, related areas, which is a, the field of analytics, because all these photos are crying out to be analyzed and classified and clustered and things like that. Here's a nifty um, chart I got from a talk from Oracle, and it just tells you what happens in 60 seconds. Um, from, from all sorts of net things, from iPhone applications downloaded, YouTube videos, which we already did and more precisely. Um, one feature I should point out about when you get these numbers from you and that you never quite get agreement because the estimates uh, are just um, different in different places or not so easy to interpret. Um, so here you have 700,000 almost search queries every every minute, 168 million emails sent, um, 13,000 hours of music streamed on Pandora, and so on. So there's just lots of stuff happening on the internet, and it's big for a trivial reason. There's just a lot of people in the world. Here's another. Um, Comment on big data coming from a book uh, written by uh, Bill Franks, who is the chief analytics officer at Teradata. Uh, I just summarized uh, the topics in that book, which are some of the important business-oriented um, sources of big data. There is um, 
web data itself. If you have a website, you get data from that website, which you can analyze to find out what parts of your products are interesting. There's a comment on possible impact on auto insurance by having sensors monitoring driving. Lots and lots of analyses of text data, such as that from Twitter, to identify uh, sentiments by grouping together this uh, text data to see common themes. There's important aspects of natural language processing. There's a nice talk by eBay showing how they put that into their user interface. We all know from uh, UPS and FedEx and other delivery um, companies that GPS data is um, being used extensively to track the progress of packages and their delivery and things like that. RFID is important in manufacturing and retail to track um, the position and status of uh, products. Um, the utility industry, there's the smart grid. That's the um, adding of sensors throughout the electrical delivery system to dynamically optimize power. Here's a nifty example, the gaming industry, uh, adding RFID to track the uh, movement of chips, to detect fraud or identify patterns. Maybe we, maybe if you're a gambler, you wouldn't like to see that, but of course, all these technologies have um, applications which any one individual may consider not so positive. There's an interesting um, area of industrial engines and additioning of sensors there. Uh, we have um, so a slide or two on that from General Electric. Um, video games, again, you can monitor the user in a video game and use that to, uh, to, to improve the game and help the user if necessary. And um, another important for the communication industry is data such as social network data that tell you what's connected to what and where you might need more resources and things like that. Here's this uh, General Electric uh, slide I mentioned that um, from a very nice talk by General Electric at a conference at Berkeley in, uh, last fall. It compares Twitter um, usage with what uh, General Electric engines gather, and it, and it points out that um, there's around seven to eight times as much data every day in 2012 coming from General Electric's engines and sent to some sort of, uh, presumably, possibly a General Electric cloud for, for study c compared to Twitter, because engines are really churning away and with lots of sensors monitoring them, you get an awful lot of data. And that, of course, can help you um, identify possible failures in the engines and do uh, and increase safety and efficiency. Um, so this gives a little more detail on how that comes. We have, they have 25,000 engines monitored and 3.6 million flight uh, records per month. Here's some sizes from science. I mentioned already the Large Hadron Collider, the big accelerators, 15 petabytes per year. Radiology is an important area, 69 petabytes per year. Uh, astronomy has lots of examples. Here's a sort of future example, won't be here for another 10 years or so. The Square Kilometer Array Telescope, and it's gonna give half a zettabyte per year just in itself. Remember, we had a total of eight this year. Um, in 2015. Earth observation, um, various star satellites and things like that, that's four petabytes per year. Now there are some fields which don't give you so much data, like earthquake science. That's because we don't have so many earthquakes, and when we do have an earthquake, we don't record huge amounts of data. That's just a few terabytes. A field I work in called study of ice sheets at the North and South Poles. That is up to a petabyte of data now. Another area of interest is simulations. When you do a simulation, or calculate the consequences of some equations. You record the result of that equation by uh, uh, writing the data produced by that simulation to disk. 
that is meant to be around a tenth of a zettabyte of data per year. Here's a well-known example from uh, National Institute of Health. Uh, <coughs> it, point, it compares the uh, the um, change in the cost of a unit of computing as a function of time, the so-called Moore's Law, which on an exponential plot is flat. And there we see the cost of sequencing the genome. And um, that cost 100 million in um, 2001. And um, it's now down to a few thousand dollars. So this points out why uh, genomics has important computing implications, because the all this genomics needs to be processed by computers, and we can see um, maybe a factor of several several hundred uh, difference in the between here and here, saying that we need effectively an improvement in the computing efficiency by some large factor to be able to process this data. If we sequenced every newborn by 2019, that's about 100 petabytes of data per year in the terms of genomic data. Another area which um, is the so-called long tail of science, uh, the Large Hadron Collider is um, big science. You have a single accelerator with maybe 3,000 people on a particular experiment, several hundred institutions just on one experiment. That's that's um, big science, that's this red area here. Um, lots of data on a, in a relatively small focused area. And then you have a long tail of science, a lot of users individually generating small amounts of data. But the uh, summed over all users, that long tail could be extremely important, both in data volume and of course in, in and the importance of the scientific results. So this just summarizes the uh, this field, namely of sort of data intensive um, activities. We have applications, particle physics, information retrieval, e-commerce, social networking, health informatics, sensors. These are all covered in this course, which this is the motivation for. So we need to analyze that, typically by use, putting the, the data into, into bags of items where those items form a space. The items could be people, events, words, rankings, etc., health records, pixels. And then we need to analyze them with statistics and machine learning, or sometimes called deep learning, image analysis, recommender engines are very important. And also, um, program, I mean, technologies to detect anomalies and patterns in general uh, complex linked data of the type you get from social connections, from um, phone phone records, or or just from the um, friends and linkages through social networking sites like Facebook. And then all of this is. Is and that analytics is done on clouds using technology like MapReduce. So this just repeats that uh, rallying cry that I put at the front, and we've already discussed this, so I, I won't go into this more detail. We've just tried to motivate this rallying cry in this initial introduction a bit better. And here we have a repeat of the actual mosaic of informatics fields defined. So all of these fields, from earth science informatics at the top to uh, geoinformatics, well that's actually related, but environmental informatics are also related to energy, or lifestyle informatics at the bottom, e or policy informatics, these are all uh, being um, impacted in the same fashion by the importance of clouds and the pervasive nature of big data.